Thank you, Chanel. Hi, everybody. Welcome in. This is your Get to Know Cricut Design Space. Um, your, this is a webinar, so it's a little bit different than maybe your standard Zoom class in that we'll use the Q&A to answer your questions. So I have Anita and Queenie from Cricut um, who will be looking at the Q&A and giving some answers as we move along if you have questions. So buckle in for the next hour. Um, if you just got your Cricut machine and you're wondering how to get started, you've taken it out of the box and plugged it in, we're going to take you through um, how to get started, what design space is, sort of how to navigate around design space, and then I'm going to invite you to open up design space if you have it and craft along with me, and we'll make a um, vinyl, permanent vinyl decal that you can put on anything. I'm going to actually put it on a notebook today, but it'll give you the basics of how to cut vinyl and how to apply vinyl. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my presentation, and we'll just let me go back there, share my screen again. All right, and I'll keep my eye on design space too, as, I mean, on the Q&A. So if you have questions as I'm moving through, um, I'll do my best to answer those too. So this class is about Cricut design space. And before we jump into design space, let's talk a little bit about getting your Cricut machine set up in your craft space. So the first thing you want to do, obviously, is take your machine out of the box, plug it in, find all your parts. Then you'll want to go online and, uh, and create a Cricut account, which will give you your Cricut ID. You only need one Cricut ID, and that is also how you access design space. Design Space can be installed on your Windows or Mac computer or on your iOS or Android device. It is basically the creative suite where you design your projects and communicate with your um, Cricut cutting machine. Now with the Cricut cutting machine, it uses a Cricut ID to register your machine as what, not just your cutting machine, but if you have an easy press or a mug press or any of our heat um, presses, you will need your Cricut ID to register your machine. Cricut IDs are free and you only need one. So if you're using um, multiple devices to create with Design Space, you still only need one Cricut ID. Design Space, again, is compatible with a desktop or laptop, any of your mobile devices and your tablet devices both Android and iOS operating systems. For the purposes of the class today, I'll be working with a desktop version. Um, I find that I use all three, so I'll use my tablet and I'll use my phone and I use my desktop and my laptop, so four different versions. But I really find my desktop version I'm most comfortable on. Um, it's the one I tend to use the most. So if you have access to a desktop or laptop, um, I want to encourage you to, to try that, but also if you have a tablet or iOS uh, mobile device, those are you can work on those devices as well. Now, Cricut has three different types of cutting machines in little silos. So we have the Cricut Joy, which is the most compact of our cutting machines. It's great for simple everyday projects. Then the next one is Cricut Explore, which is our most popular machine. It's a full featured cutting machine for popular craft projects. So for card making, for scrapbooks, um, you can cut felt with your uh, Cricut Explore. Over a hundred different materials you can cut with your Cricut Explore. If you wanna go a little bit more advanced, then we have the Cricut Maker. And the Cricut Maker is the most versatile machine with unique capabilities. It has a quick swap cutting tool, so you can use a rotary cutter. Um, it will deboss and it will has an etching tool, just to name a few of the things that differentiate the Cricut Maker from your Explore. But the Explore is by far probably the most popular machine that we make. Cricut Access is the third component of setting up your machine. So you'll have your machine, you have Cricut ID, Design Space, and Cricut Access. Cricut Access is a monthly or yearly subscription and unlocks unlimited use of Cricut's growing digital library. So what's in that digital library? Well, we have over 250,000 images to work with. 
you have 700 or more fonts to work with. And today they just added a, at least 25 more fonts, which are really fun. And there are um, over a thousand customizable projects in design space. So when you get your first machine and you set up your Cricut ID, you have the option to do a 30 day free trial of Cricut Access. And I really wanna encourage everyone who got a new machine to use that 30 day free trial and really run Cricut Access through the paces. Some of you may use it a ton and some of you may say, you know what, I only use it every now and then. I don't really need to sign up for a subscription. So you may do a la carte. There are a lot of free images um, in Cricut Access as well. So, it, and you can upload images into Design Space. We won't be going into that today, but that option is available. Now, Cricut Design Space has kind of two different components to it. The first is the home screen and the second is the canvas. So we're gonna do a deeper dive into the home screen and then move into the canvas. So first we'll go into the, into the home screen. And the home screen, again, I'll be showing you on a desktop or laptop and it's very similar, a little bit different, but your home screen is really your command central. From your home screen, you can navigate between the home screen and the canvas, as well as do your universal keyword searches. So your home screen on a desktop or laptop will look something like this. At the top of the home screen, you have this gray header bar. Now on the left side of the gray header bar is your drop-down menu. And within the drop-down menu, this is where you would set up a new product. So if you just got your new machine, you've got your Cricut ID, you've downloaded Design Space, and you want to connect it all together, you would come over here and cl click on New Product Setup and follow those directions. This is also where you can manage your custom materials and your Cricut Access and a couple other things in here. Also in the drop down section at the top, if you're brand new to Cricut, you just got your machine, I would suggest you take a tour of the learning plan and you can follow through on different projects in the learning plan. And then you can navigate between the home and canvas right here, as well as access your profile. So when you go to your profile, you wanna set up your profile and this is where you save your projects that you've created. So as you work in design space, you can save your projects, either, either if you're midway through designing or you're like, oh, that's really cute. I want to share that with a friend or somebody's going to want me to make one of those for them. And I want to have access to that project. You would do that in your profile. You can also um, find other people's profiles and follow other people to see what they're making. So if you find somebody that you like their projects, you can follow along with their pro projects and do things that they've shared. Now we're back at our home screen and the top header bar. So really quick, just to kind of run through it, you have your hamburger or drop down menu on the left. You know you're on your home screen and it should have your Cricut name here as well as an alert system. So if somebody you follow has shared a new project, that will pop up there. Or if someone's shared your project that or liked your project, that number will pop up there. You can quickly access your projects from here. And this next little icon here, let me, that, oops. This next little icon here is your drop-down menu to determine which machine you're using. Now, on your home screen, you'll see different layers of categories of images. So as you go across, they are represent different um, elements. And as you work across the layers, they are seasonal, either featured images or featured projects, projects from the community and things like that. So this is really your hub of what's happening in, um, in the Cricut world. And you can access things, let's see, if you need to change your machine type, let's say you're using a Maker 3 or you're switching over to a Cricut Joy, this is where you would do that. I mentioned that before, oops, sorry, I mentioned that before and that's right there. I thought I had that as a drop down. So that is your, um, that's your home screen in a nutshell. And when you're ready to move to the canvas, you go up to this uh, top corner here and you click new project. 
Now we're going to take a look at the canvas and where the home screen is sort of your command central, the canvas is your design command central space. It's basically a blank canvas for you to begin creating. Now, if you're joining us from a mobile device, your home screen and canvas will look something like this. I wanna point out that all of your elements are going to be along the bottom of your home screen. And that's because your canvas space is limited, your screen space, your screen real estate is limited. So Cricut has made um, your screen as big as possible with the canvas and all of your tools are down at the bottom. If you're joining us with a tablet device, you have a little bit more real estate to work with. So those um, tools are opened up a little bit more. So you have your design panel elements over on the left and more of your editing tools in the middle. Now, if you're joining me with a desktop or laptop, this is what your Canvas home screen will look like. And from here, you can see your header bar stays very similar. So you can nav, you have that hamburger bar, you can navigate back and forth to the home screen. You can access your projects. This is where you would save a project you're working on and you can change your machine. And when you're ready to make your project, this light will turn green and you can click that to make it. Oh, this is where you can change your machine, sorry. So you have that drop down menu there and you can choose which machine you're working with. And I point that out because the machine you're working with will determine what is available to you in Cricut Access and what materials are available for you to cut with. So if you're using a Maker 3, you can um, you have the option, maybe you have the um, embossing tool or debossing tool. Um, so you want to have your machine set on Maker 3 so you can deboss. If you're using a Cricut Joy, you won't have large projects available for you to create with because they're too big to cut on your Cricut Joy. So that kind of all ties in together. Now also on your um, home screen down at, at the bottom on your Canvas screen is the ability to zoom in and out on your project so you can enlarge your Canvas. And then you have these guidelines along the top <laughs> and the side of your Canvas. And this lets you know how big your project is and kind of where it is on the canvas itself. Now on the left side of the canvas, this is considered your design panel. And this is where you um, find elements to add to your canvas. So you start off with this blank canvas and you wanna add elements to the canvas. You come over to this panel here and you have on your desktop, you have templates and projects on your on all the devices you'll have the shapes icon images text phrases editable images i'm not 100% if those are on that's a brand new feature for us so i'm not sure if that's on a mobile device or not yet you have the upload feature and the monogram feature so if you're on a mobile device or a tablet device those are all going to be in the bottom left corner of your screen so as you click on an icon you have the option to bring that image onto your canvas. So if you click on the shapes icon, for example, a pop-up window with all the shapes that are available to bring onto your canvas shows up. You simply click on one of those shapes and it comes onto your canvas. Now, when that shape is on your canvas, you'll notice that you have that shape selected because you have a bounding box around your shape. And it's got these four little, um, boxes on each corner and you can use those to enlarge or reduce the size of your image. When you have a shape or multiple shapes on your canvas and they are selected, you'll have an edit bar at the top that becomes active. So sometimes you'll see elements on the edit bar that are grayed out. They're, I call those ghosted. And that just means you don't have the right number of elements selected for that to be active. So this one here, a line, is grayed out. To use a line, you need to have two or more shapes on your canvas. Now, if you add text to your canvas, you just click in the design panel, the text icon, and your text box will appear, and you can just begin adding your text to your canvas. With that text box comes another edit bar, 
and that's this edit bar right here. This uh, second edit bar applies only to your text layers. So within this um, edit bar for your text layer, you can choose the font you wanna work with, the style of your font, the size of your font, and some other features curving your font, um, your text and things like that will be on this second edit bar. Now, if you're on a mobile device and you don't see these, you need to click on that little icon that says edit and these two bars will become available. As you bring elements onto your canvas, you'll notice over on the right side, your layers panel. Now, if you're on a mobile device, you'll have a little icon on the bottom that says layers, and that is what opens up your layers panel. On a desktop or laptop, it's you have enough screens real estate to have that open all the time. And your layers panel is where as you add from your design panel onto your canvas, those all show up in the layers panel. So each element you add onto your canvas will have its own layer here in the layers panel. Now, as you see, I have this, I added a text box, Felicia, and this soccer heart um, image from the image library of Cricut Access. And as I add those elements onto my canvas, you'll notice when I have those elements selected, as I have all of it selected, my layers are a darker green color. So my soccer ball layer, those two layers are grouped together. I can move those on my canvas and I can enlarge them. But when I send that information over to my machine, it'll separate the black elements of the soccer ball onto a different prepare screen than the white elements of the soccer ball. Also, it will send over the word Felicia as a separate element. If I wanted to keep that all together, let's say I was gonna put that on a Tumblr or something like that. So I wanted to keep that all together in one design. I would need to come down to the bottom of my layers panel here where I have actions. And actions, you apply to the elements on your canvas. So as you add elements to your canvas, you can select two, three, four, five, six actions, and they'll you can two, three, four, five, six layers, and then apply an action to those layers. So in this example here, I would choose the action of attach. And what that would do is it would hold all of my pieces together that I wanted to hold together over to my machine. So when I select attach, I attach the name Felicia with the black portions of the soccer ball heart, and then the white portions are a separate layer. Then when I send those over to my prepare screen, you'll see I have two different mats here, and these represent how many mats I need to send my materials through my machine to cut. So my first mat would cut the white layer, and then the second mat would cut the black layer. And you notice it's the position of the soccer pieces along with the name is held as it was on my canvas. This is also in your prepare mat where you choose if you're cutting on your mat or without a mat. If you're using an Explore 3 or a Maker 3 or a Cricut Joy, you would have the option to cut your material without a mat if you're using Smart Material. Then you also here would choose what size material you're using. I usually leave it at the default of 12 by 12 and don't change it um, because even if I'm only gonna put a little three inch by 12 inch piece of material here, I don't find it beneficial to change that from the 12 by 12. So that I usually do leave at 12 by 12. And then the last part here, if you're creating something that you're planning to iron on a shirt or a bag or something like that, a mug, you need to mirror your project. And I'm gonna take one step back so you can see, if I were cutting it out of vinyl, I would just be able to cut it right like this and apply it on my Tumblr or my notebook, whatever I was putting this on. To mirror your image, because when you cut with iron-on material, you're actually cutting on the reverse side of the material. So you're cutting from the back side of the material. So you need to reverse your image. And this is where you mirror your image right here in your prepare screen. Once you have your material, once you have your mats all set up, 
you send it over and the last step is to choose your machine. So you, it'll go with the machine that you already selected on your canvas. And then you would set your material that you're cutting. So you can select some of your favorites or go to the populars or browse all your materials. And you would select your material here and then you'd send it over to your machine to begin cutting. Now, I'm gonna take us back a step and go look at images. Um, in our design panel. So again, if you're on that, if you're on your tablet, or your phone, your images is going to be in the bottom left corner, and it will be this hot air balloon design here. When you click on the images, it brings you into um, Cricut Access, and this is where you can browse all of the images that are available. Now there are over 250,000 images available in Design Space, and we have, um, and that those are included in <clears throat> Cricut Access. We also have branded materials, um, images that you can purchase um, as you use them. So like if you wanted to do a Disney princess image, you would purchase that image and then that image becomes part of your Cricut access and you can cut it however many times you need to cut it. But if you want to look for an image, then you would use this keyword search and type in a keyword for your image. So using my example of the soccer ball, if I type in here the word soccer, I get a lot of results that go with the word soccer. There's 935 results. So I could spend a lot of time looking through those um, soccer images and trying to find just the perfect one, or I can use the filters on the left and filter my images. So if I wanted to filter by which images are free, Maybe I've, you know, my 30 day free Cricut access has expired and I haven't decided what I want to do. You can click on the free um, filter and you can see which images you can cut for free. You can also choose by operation type. So if you wanted to just filter it out, free images that I can cut, you would select those two filters and then you're down to 13 images. Now, when you find the image you want, you simply click on the image and you see this green box around your image and then you add that to your canvas. And now that image is on our canvas, we're ready to cut it and we're ready to go. I would just click the make it icon and it would take me to my prepare screen. Now, one last thing I wanna mention is Cricut has an entire ecosystem of your supplies for your Cricut projects. So Cricut offers a huge variety of colors of vinyl and iron-on material, cardstock, all different kinds of materials for the different machines and that those materials are interchangeable. Um, so smart materials like you can cut using smart vinyl without a mat in your Cricut 3, um, your Cricut Maker 3 or your Explore 3 but you can use that same material on a mat in your Explore Air, for example. Cricut has a whole collection of tools to use with the machines from um, your weeding tool, tweezers to pens, all different kinds of tools. And then additional accessories, if you're interested in doing iron-on, we have lots of easy press iron-on materials for you to use. All right, so uh, the Q&A has been kind of quiet. If you guys have questions that maybe we didn't get answered in the presentation, please feel free to drop those in. But at this time, I'd like to invite you to open up um, your design space with me if you wanna cre create along with me or if you just wanna watch, that's okay too. This class is being recorded. I just wanna remind everybody, the class is being recorded and it will be available. Um, on YouTube, I think within 72 hours or so. So if you just want to watch and soak it all in and ask questions, feel free. If you want to open up Design Space and work along with me, feel free to do that as well. So let me go ahead and share my screen and show you what I'm going to create today. Um, <clears throat> we're going to create, I say I, we are going to create together a little, um, your first vinyl project that you can put on a notebook or a tumbler. I'm going to create this uh, design here. Sorry about that. I froze for a second. I think I'm back now. All right. Okay. Oh, am I frozen? Let's see. 
Am I frozen? No, okay. Sorry about that, I'm back. Um, and I, I'm guessing I'm not sharing my screen again. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Sorry about that. I'm, hold on one second, guys. I'm so sorry. I just, I'm having a Zoom issue. Can you see my screen? Can you see me? Okay. I'm going to assume you we can. We can see your camera. We can okay. see you, but we cannot see your computer screen. Okay. So let me go back in and thank you. I'll share my screen here. All right. So now I've got design space open on my screen. And I'm just going to make um, this little design here. And what I'm doing is we're going to add, I don't know if we're going to add text to the canvas and a little image. And if you have Cricut access, you can use any image you want, but I'll show you how to find um, an image that is free in Cricut access. I don't, Chanel, I don't know what's happening. I don't know if there's like a recent um, update to Zoom that I'm missing or something, or maybe I have, I'm gonna try and close some other programs on my um, computer and see if that might help. So just bear with me one second. Just wanna make sure I get as much. All right, Anita, were there any questions we can answer as I'm just trying to recover this? Um, so they did want to know a little about the weld. Um, and I did send them a link with the information on the new weld box because okay. it has changed. Yeah. Um, there is another question about um, Bluetooth with the Cricut um, 3 machine. Okay. Yvette, the one thing I'll tell you, if it is not showing as you try to pair, please give us a call at Cricket Member Care, and we'll be able to help troubleshoot that for you. Perfect. Yeah, the Cricket Care is fantastic, and Anita is one of our Cricket Care members. So if you ever run into problems with your machine, they're there to help answer your questions. Okay, so I think I've got I think I've got some programs closed. I just closed my PowerPoint. So hopefully I can share this now and we won't freeze anymore. No more freezing. All right. So this is my design space. And I'm just gonna, I just have left this up so you all could see what we're going to create. Now um it's really easy to create in design space. And I know kind of like we went through an overview of everything. And the first thing I'm going to show you all how to do is how to find an image to add to your canvas. So I just went for a real simple, something cute um, that would be, I could use it at any, any time of the year. So um, I did a little daisy search. So if you go to images in design space and you, um, and you'll come in to this screen here. And in the keyword search, just go ahead and type in any word that um, that you would use. So if you're looking for an element, if you're looking for, let's say your child loves soccer, you could do soccer balls. Um, like that Felicia, I did that as a water bottle for my niece who's a soccer player. Um, I have another niece who loves music and guitar. So maybe I would do a guitar search. Um, my daughter's name is Daisy. And so we do daisies a lot in our house. So I would do a keyword search for Daisy. Now I do have Cricut access. So you can see that um, where this item might normally, if you didn't have Cricut access would be 99 cents to use. Um, once you purchase that image, that image is then in your Cricut Access Library, and you can use that image as many times as you'd like to use it. It becomes part of your library. 
Um, if you want to, you can do a, a filter for what free images might be available for something associated with Daisy, or if Daisy didn't give you enough, like you're like, oh, that's kind of limited. Maybe I wanted some more options. So you could type in the keyword search flower and see what options come up with the word flower. And then again, you could click on that free icon and see if any of these images came up for something you might like. I'm going to stick with my Daisy image because I, I just think that's a fun one. Um, and I'm going to add that in. Now you'll notice on the image under some of them, you have these names and those are artists who design for design space and put their images up. So if you find an artist that you like, so this cuts on SVG, I can click on her profile and then see all the different images that she puts up. If there's one I come across, I'm like, oh, I like that. I want to save it and use it later. You can click on that save icon and save that later. And then you can just add that to your canvas. So yes, Jamie, if it says that it's 99 cents, um, it is 99 cents, but you're not charged until you use the image. So if you just want to bring it in and kind of go like, is this what I want to use? I'm not really sure. You can do that. And then once you know, yep, this is what I want to cut, then you would individually pay for that image to cut that one image. But then that image is yours and you can come back. You could use it on a t-shirt. You could use it on a notebook. You could use it on a water bottle at different sizes as many times as you want to use that image. So go ahead and bring in your image that you want to use and, and kind of just maybe something simple that wouldn't take a long time to weed so you can make sure you get your project done. So we'll bring in an image and then we're going to add some text. So my intent is to put this on a, um, let me clear my font type out here. My intent is to put this on a little notebook so I am going to, I'm going to show you guys, um, when you, okay, when you bring in your text box, let me delete that out and show you what your text box will look like. When you bring in your text box, it comes in as like a little um, square. You can start typing right away. You can just type right into it. You don't have to get your cursor in there or your finger in there highlight anything or change anything, you can just start typing right away. Um, so add your, add your text box to your canvas. You can size it. I can just grab that corner and resize that image. Or I can look and say, well, how big is my flower? My flower's three inches in height. And your height is right. You can see your width and your height on your edit bar right at the top. So then I can say, well, I want to make my text three inches tall. So I just come up here and I highlight that text, the height box, and I change that to three inches. So now, you know, my, my word notes and my flower are the same size. And maybe I can, I'll resize that before I get too far. If I want to, I can change my font. As I mentioned, Cricut has over 700 different fonts to choose from. So in the font edit bar, I would just click the drop down arrow on the font and I would type in, um, I could, if I knew the keyword search, um, then I could type in using a keyword search. So I know the font I want to use is called Gin and Tonic. It's one of the brand new fonts. It's super cute. I just fell in love with it. And so I could use that font right there. Now, if you, um, if you need to filter, like let's say you don't have Cricut Access, you can filter by free fonts and see which fonts are free. If you have Cricut Access, then you have those 700 fonts to use from. You also have your system fonts. Now, system fonts are fonts that you've uploaded to your computer or are part of your computer operating system. It's like when you go into Word and you see fonts that are in there, those are your system fonts. So you have access to all those fonts if they're cuttable fonts. So you have that. Like there's one I use all the time. It's called Lobster. And it's a font that I've uploaded to my computer. And I just use that. I just think it's the funnest font. So I use that one all the time. But that's one that is a system font. 
Now, now that I have this on my canvas, I want you to see in your layers panel that you have, let me delete my original one there. So we just are dealing with two and I'm gonna delete these. So I only have what we're working on here. Okay, so here's my canvas and I have my flower and my word notes. Now, as I mentioned, I um, can re, if I, if I purchase this one image, the flower, I can reuse this as many times as I want, different sizes, different shapes, different materials. We do have an angel policy. So on the Cricut website, you might just look up the angel policy. I see somebody asking if you can use it within your business. Double check the angel policy and make sure that that image is available for you to use um, in that format. You can also upload your own images. So if you've designed an image on your iPad or something using Procreate and you wanna upload that image, you can do that as well. So lots and lots of options. Okay, so what I wanna do is I would like to, I'm gonna make my notes a little bit smaller, my, my actual notebook. Let me stop sharing here for one second and I'll show you the notebook I'm gonna be using. This is um, one of the Michaels notebooks. I think this is, I'm not sure if this is plain or dot. It's a dot journal. So um, this one, I'm going to add the notes with the daisy on it. And I kind of want to center it right here. So I'm just going to take my tape measure and measure across my notebook and see how big I would want my design to be. So I think the most I want my design to be is four inches. So I'm going to go back into my um, screen and change my design. So overall, it's only four inches wide. So my width right now is 12 and a half inches, which is humongous, but I just want it four inches. So we're going to make that a little bit smaller there like that. And I can even take my notes and bring my notes in a little bit smaller if I want to. And then if I wanted to, remember how I said at the beginning, when you have multiple layers on your canvas, some of your edit items might be ghosted out and some might not be. So if I took all of these elements and I use that align feature, think of this like lining up when you use like a Word document and you, you want all your words centered or all your words to the left or to the right. Think of the align feature like that. So I want to align these up center vertically so they'll go across evenly on my notebook. And then I want to attach this all together. So I you could... Send it over in multiple colors if you want to. I'm just going to use white today. So if I attach this all together, I'll keep the position of my elements on my canvas. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, if you're if you're cre if you're working on it on the image, on your image, I want you to look at my screen for a second so I can really make sure I explain this to you. Right now, I have different layers. I have my notes layer. And then my daisy layer is grouped together. When images are grouped together, I can resize them and move them around on my canvas together. But that grouping only stays with my canvas because when I send that over to my machine to cut it, when I click the make it icon there and I send it over, it moves and separates all the different layers. So my notes is on one layer, my flowers on a different layer and my little daisy, the, the centerpiece there is on another layer. So if I wanted to do this all as one piece in one, um, kind of in one piece of vinyl, like one color, and I send it over there, then I would have to piece it back together on my notebook, which kind of is, you know, maybe is more than I wanna do. So. What I want to do instead of grouping these together and being able to resize them and move them around, what I would like to do is attach them all together. And when I attach, I go down to the bottom of my layers panel and I choose that attach icon. Now, if you're on a mobile device, you're looking for the actions icon and attach is within the actions icon. Now, when I attach these together, they turn all to one color because I'm intending to cut them out of one color of vinyl. And when I send it over to my, to my machine, it keeps it all together. So now all that, those images will cut in one layer all together. Somebody asked earlier about, a, about weld. 
Now, Weld is really a deeper dive into design space. Once you're comfortable finding images, maybe adding text, then you'll want to explore Weld. But I'll touch on it today because somebody asked, um, and Josie's asking right now, what's the difference between attach and weld? So when you weld your elements together, okay, let me just, let me go like this. Hold on, let me come back. <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. You have group. And what group does is group takes your pieces and think of it like a paper clip. So I can move those pieces around on my canvas. I can resize them all together. When I send that image to my machine, that paper clip goes away and those papers go scattering. Think of group like a paper clip. It just temporarily holds it together, what you're seeing on your canvas. Think of attach like a stapler. So it's gonna staple those pieces of paper together in the way that you have them relative to each other when you send it over to your machine. So attach will hold those together and send it over to your machine together. But you can always come back and detach and move things around and resize it however you'd like to do it. It's not permanent. Cricut has Combine, which is a multi-step level of weld. So weld is the first step and weld is a permanent step. So what you're saying is, I want to glue these together and I don't want them ever to come apart. Like I'm putting some super glue on my project and it's never moving. It's going to go over to your machine together, but it's never going to move. It's always going to be welded together. The parts underneath weld that allow for combine will allow you to keep your individual layers and do multiple um, interactions or actions upon those layers. So think of the three group, attach, and weld as paperclip, staple, and glue. And then after you're comfortable with that, then take a deeper dive into the um, combined features, which allows you to do more cutting of images. So it's great once you're starting, once you're ready to um, make your own designs and from shapes, that's when you really want to like understand combine. But if you're just getting started with design space and you just got your machine, kind of put that on the shelf for a, like a month from now when you're really comfortable with the attach, the group and the weld, and then take that dive into um, combine because then you'll have a, like a really good foundation. Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen again. How can you fix the separation between the letters on your text? That is a great question. On your text, if you keep it as its own layer, you can um, check that spacing in the, um, the, uh, the edit bar of your text. So when you add text to your canvas, you can change that letter spacing and move that bigger or smaller if you'd like to. So that's a great question. Okay, so now I have on my canvas, and actually I would like to, I'm going to go ahead and cut this a little bit bigger and do it, uh, now that I'm looking at it, it looks a little small. So I'm going to move it and make it six inches wide and put it along the spine of my, um, along the spine of my book. So I've got it all together, and now I just send it over to make it, and it will show up on my um Prepare screen here, and I'm going to use um, my vinyl on a mat. It will be, I keep my material size 12 by 12. And since I am not ironing it on, I'm using permanent vinyl. I'm just going to keep it not mirrored. If you're making a t-shirt and you're ironing this on, you want to mirror your image. And I'll show you what that looks like, um, how that works. So then I just hit continue. So good question. Um, when you send an image to make it, how do you keep it in the same spot on the mat as you did on the canvas? Let me go back because that's a great question. Um, you don't. Basically, if when you attach or weld, you hold things in place relative to each other. So my flower is held in place relative to where it is on my notes. If you wanted to cut this out, say seven inches over on your mat, 
like let's say you had a chunk cut out of your 12 by 12 piece here, you can just move your element on your mat as much, you know, you can move it however you want to move it. You can angle it, you can rotate it. Let's say you just have a little skinny piece, you're going to put it right there. You can do that if you want to. So the attach and the weld hold those pieces relative to each other, but not relative to your blank canvas. So that's a, that's a great question and um, good, good question. Now I'm gonna just send it over to my machine and I'll choose my material. So I'll be using um, a premium permanent glossy that is our permanent vinyl glossy. And then I'll use my fine point blade and I'm ready to send it over. So let me go ahead and stop sharing. I'm gonna switch over to my overhead camera and keep those questions coming. You guys are asking fabulous questions. So we're gonna keep answering those. And Renee, I'm gonna show you what the mat is. So on your prepare screen, you have a mat that shows in the color of your material. Your, this is your mat. And the mat is what you put your material on to send it into your machine. So if you're using everyday, um, premium vinyl, like that, that is not smart. So I'll explain the difference here. You would put a piece of this on your mat and send it through to be cut. If you're using smart vinyl, you do not need a mat with smart vinyl because smart vinyl, smart, it doesn't need a mat. And your smart vinyl comes can come in really long rolls. This is a 21 foot roll and I can do nine inches um, segments of my design. And with smart material, I can just load it right into my machine and it will cut my design. Now it also works like everyday vinyl because I can just trim a piece of my smart vinyl and use my mat and put it in with my mat. So you're not limited to just using your smart vinyl with um, your Maker 3 or your Explore 3. You can use smart vinyl on your, on your Explore Air or whichever machine you have. And you can use your regular everyday material on your different machines using your mat. So there's four different mats. You have a blue mat, which is the light grip mat. And that is the mat I use for um, paper, cardstock, things like that. Your standard grip I use for most everything. Then you have a pink fabric mat and a purple strong grip mat. Usually my strong grip mat I'll use for materials that are, um, that are heavier, like leather or something like that, and that I'm using with my rotary cutter. So your material has a right side and a wrong side, and all of your Cricut material on the back has the grids, on the, your vinyl has the grids, and it will tell you if you're using permanent vinyl or temporary vinyl. Now, in terms of permanent vinyl and temporary vinyl, I, we get asked this question all the time. Which one do you use when? So I'm making this notebook, and I know it's going to get manhandled a lot, pushed around a bit. So I wanna make sure that I, um, it's a permanent vinyl. So I'm using a permanent vinyl here and I line it up with the top left corner on my mat because that's where your machine always puts your element to be cut. If I were, if I'd moved it around on my mat, obviously I would move it around on my mat. Now, um, let me go ahead and cut this. I, if I have time, Gabby, I'd be happy to show this cutting the same project without my mat. While that's cutting through, so, okay, so difference between permanent vinyl and removable vinyl. I think about like using my removable vinyl for home decor items or seasonal items, things that I'm not using um, for, that I don't want to be permanent. So I'm gonna, I might change it up later on or something like that. So I, I wanna use a, a removable vinyl. Something that I want to be permanent Maybe it's going to go through the dishwasher or maybe it's going to be outside and I don't want it to come, come off over time. I want it to be a permanent design. Then I'll use the permanent vinyl. Um, and with your regular vinyls, you would use a standard grip transfer tape. Now I did pull out this glitter vinyl and it, the glitter vinyl has a texture to it. So when you're working with glitter vinyl, you'll use a strong grip transfer tape and it says strong grip on it. And the grid color is 
purple. You don't want to use your strong grip transfer tape on your everyday vinyl, your permanent or removable, because it really holds onto that vinyl and then it makes it harder to remove that vinyl onto your, um, onto your blank that you're using. Okay, so once it's cut, now I can feel it and I can feel my cut lines and I'm ready to unload it. If for some reason your design didn't cut through, you can hit the play button again and it will cut that vinyl again in the same location. But I can feel mine and it cut through, so I'm ready to take it off. So I just remove the vinyl from my mat and you wanna make sure that you put your cover back on your mat to keep your mats clean. Um, if your mats get dirty, you can clean them. I clean, I keep baby wipes handy. And so I'll clean it up with a baby wipe and, um, and just kind of let it, let it work its way through. Your mats will last a long time. I gotta have my cover on this one. Your mats will last a long time if you care for them. So to care for them, just keep them covered and keep your, um, keep them clean. That's, that's my best advice there on your mats. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut down this and I'll save these little pieces and use these on another project in the future. Now what I have to do is weed out the part of my design I'm not doing. So I will just use my weeding tool and it's like a dentist pick, but it has a pointy end on the end of it. This is probably, if you haven't, if you didn't pick one of these up, this is probably your best go-to tool that you really wanna make sure you have. Um, and if you're like me, you may end up with a few of them because you lose them and then they turn up <laughs> or they go in the trash. I've thrown them away by accident before. Just it's fallen off my table into my trash. So I'm just going to remove the parts of my design that I'm not keeping. And I just kind of walk that off my mat here. And your, your vinyl will tear. So if it kind of gets in the way, you can tear it off, but you wanna make sure you don't tear the parts that you wanna keep. So I'm just gonna remove that vinyl. So the Cricut Maker 3 has a variety of app adaptive tools um, in terms of your blades. You have it, your rotary blade, your fine point blade, a deep point blade, debossing blade, scoring blade, perforating blade, and double scoring blade. I think that's everything. Um, so what is that? Like, I think there's like 13 different tools. And some of the tools, your, your tools that will go like this style of tool in your maker will also go in your explore. So those tools are interchangeable, but your Cricut Joy tools are not interchangeable. Your Cricut Joy tools are specific to Cricut Joy. Okay, so I should have done this out of a, a different color so you could see it. But I have my notes section here, and then I just am gonna take a piece of transfer tape and I, you can reuse your transfer tape over and over again. So once I use it once, I tuck it under my mat here, and then I just grab it when I, when I need it again. So to use your transfer tape, you're going to peel the back off. And what the transfer tape does is it moves your design from the carrier sheet that your vinyl's on, and it allows you to move it all as one onto your blank. So I'm just going to take the back of my transfer tape off like that. And you can, I don't know if you can tell in this light, but there, there's a, the grids are on your transfer tape. So that's super helpful in moving your design over. So I'm just gonna line up my design on my, on my transfer tape here. So I've got that line right underneath the notes. And I'm just, usually I would use, um, I have a scraper tool that I use, but you can use your brayer. If you do a lot of card making or with cardstock, the brayer is a, a great tool to have. I didn't have one for a long time. And then I got one, I was like, oh, this is a game changer. What the brayer does is it just helps push um, your material onto your mat and make sure your material won't wiggle on your mat. So now to remove my backing off my vinyl, I just kind of walk it off at a 45 degree angle here. And if I get stuck, I'll fold my carrier sheet 
and then peel it back. So it's always kind of like a fold and peel. And let me tell you guys, you will have, you will struggle. I don't think this is easy. I mean, it is, it gets easy once you understand how to do it. But if you're just a beginner and you're just starting out, be patient with yourself. Um, use your weeding tool to kind of hold those little pieces down. Fold your paper as you go. The carrier sheet, fold that as you go, and it will make all the difference. You just pop it down, and it helps push those pieces down onto your transfer tape. If you use the right transfer tape with the right vinyl, um, it's super easy. It, it makes it much easier. And yes, you can use the standard grip transfer tape for your removable vinyl. Now I will say my Band-Aids always stick to my transfer tape. So sorry about that. Okay, so there's my design. Now you're gonna be able to see it a little bit better. So here's my notebook and my design. And again, I have a clean edge there because I use my paper trimmer. So I'm just gonna use that clean edge to line my design up on the edge of my notebook. And I just push that down. And again, you can use your hand. Um, I've moved my brayer tool, but it's like a little wedge tool. And it's really great. Let me see if I have that over here. Look what I did with this. I may have, who knows? Anyway, so you just, you use your, your wedge tool, you use your um, brayer tool, a rolling pin if you need to, whatever you need to make sure that that design is down on your blank and you don't have any bubbles in it. If you feel any bubbles, this is the time to work those out with your fingernail. You can take your weeding tool and kind of work those out there. Um, Jennifer, yes, she's saying my window doesn't say system font, just the word system. And yes, it is, that's, that's your system font. So it'll just say system and you can select that. Now, again, I started that 45 degree angle and I roll my transfer tape back off my design here. And I just peel that right back. If any of my design is sticking up, I just come with my finger and I push it down a little bit. And then there I go. Now, I do usually wait about 24 hours before gifting or using my whatever it is that I made because I want to make sure that the adhesive has had a time to set. So I, I will kind of wait that little bit of time, especially if it's um, like on a glass or something that's going through the dishwasher. I want to wait on that. But how fun is that? And if you wanted to, you could have, I could have cut the um, notes out of a little yellow piece there and had a little yellow center for my flower. I could add something uh, slender on here. Like I could put the date on here, 2023 on the column. Now, let me show you, um, I don't have my heat press set up, but if you're doing, um, if you're doing something that is an iron on, if I wanted to do that to iron it on, what I would do was you're actually putting your shiny side down on your carrier, on your mat. So if this were my white vinyl, I've already cut this design out. You put it down so that the shiny side of your iron-on material is face down and your material is actually facing up. So just like our vinyl, we had our material facing up and the carrier sheet down. With your iron-on material, your carrier sheet is clear. And so that's why you have to mirror it so that when I go to put this on something, like let's say I was gonna put this on, oh, here, I have it done. So if I'm putting it on an oven mitt like this, I would just have my oven mitt and you turn that over and now my carrier sheet, the carrier sheet is what holds everything together. And then I would iron that onto my oven mat like this. And so that's why you have to do that reversing. Um, can you wash a mug with vinyl on it? So number one is what are your washing instructions for your mug? Is it wash, like, can you wash your mug? If you can wash your mug, then, um, then yes, you can put permanent vinyl through the washing machine. Chanel, do you mind if I show real quick how to cut with smart material? 
Uh, George, take your time. Okay, great. Let me show you all how to do that. I'm just going to grab a box uh, that's not white. <laughs> Okay, so here's some smart material. And I have, um, you'll see on the packaging, one is removable and one is permanent vinyl. Because I'm, I would put this on my notebook, I wanna use permanent vinyl. So we're just gonna turn this, pull this out. This is, um, it'll tell me on the back, hopefully if I have the right material and the right packaging, that it's permanent vinyl. So now I would just go into design space. I'll share my screen again. My image isn't adhering to the transfer shape. Not sure I did this right. Harriet, um, give it a good rub down, turn your, turn your material over and rub from the back and just do that folding over. Um, as you peel that carrier sheet off, fold and crunch, like fold, um, along the edge, and that will help the image adhere to your transfer tape. So since I'm using smart material here, I'm going to say I'm cutting without a mat. And it just tells me I need a 13 by 6 inch piece. So when I go to continue, it will only give me a few options um, of material that I can use. So I can go browse, I'll go to popular, because I'm just going to use smart vinyl that's permanent. And then I'll use my um, cutting blade there. So let me stop share there and we'll go to back over to my overhead. So if my project has multiple colors, if the transfer tape puts them all together. Yes, Renee, if your project has multiple colors, you could put it together with your transfer tape or right on your blank. So like with my little notebook here, if I wanted to have the yellow center for my flower, I would have cut that out of yellow and not out of white or just wouldn't have put the white on. And then I would have applied the yellow on top of that. Since that's just a little piece, I would have done that separately, not with my transfer tape. Okay, so my, my smart vinyl goes in underneath the tabs, pushed up against the rollers. I click load and it pulls it in and feeds it. So Sue's asking if I'm creating a 40 year, a 40 birthday sticker, to put on a balloon, would I need to mirror the image? The answer to that question is you only mirror when you're ironing. When you're using some sort of heat, um, heat process, you wanna mirror because any of your iron-on material, whether it's infusible ink or iron-on vinyl, you just have to cut from the back side. So you would turn it over and cut it that way. If you're making stickers using the print then cut feature, you would just print it like normal and then put it on your, your um, sticker paper on your blue mat and cut that out that way. So in fact, I'll just take this little, I'll take that little yellow, my white piece off of here. So I just unload the mat and now I've got my design on there. So I can, I would just now take it over to my paper trimmer and trim that down. We just trim it that way. And then I'll put, I keep my uh, material in the packaging. So I always know, I don't get confused about what material is what. Let's see, so I'll just take that there. And then we just, again, we will remove um, our design. We'll weed it out. And I'm gonna weed from the center this time. So you can kind of get a different view of how to weed if you're weeding a piece that has lots of, little pieces or big pieces, you can go start from the center of your design and weed out that way. I'm, I'm holding my little sticker here, my center piece, because I want to show you how I'm going to use that. Okay, so now I just pull that back. Now, if you do make something and you want to share it on social media, please use the hashtag um, makewithcricket. Or Cricket with Michaels, that's what it is, Cricket with Michaels. And we, I'd love to see what you make. Okay, so for my little centerpiece, I would just take my transfer tape and I'm actually gonna move it off of, just move it off of here. Like that. 
And then I can pick that little center piece up with my transfer tape and bring it over to my flower design. And I can build up multiple colors that way. So you can use multiple colors that way. And then I would just maybe add my little white center back on this one and then put that on another notebook and I'm ready to go. So that, that's how you get started with your Cricut. Um, lots of fun things you can do. Don't be afraid to try and make mistakes. It's going to happen. Um, we have lots of videos um, of using your Cricut machine, making tons and tons of projects. If you go on the Michael's YouTube site, we have, a, I, I can't, I don't know, two years now we've been doing videos. So lots of step throughs. You can always reach out to me. Um, you can find me kesley.365. Follow along with my Cricut profile and see what projects we're cooking up for our upcoming classes. If you are interested in learning how to use iron-on material and make shirts um, using the Easy Press, we have a class tomorrow for some Christmas pajamas. So I hope you're able to join us for that class. Um, we'd love, I'd love to see you and help you learn how to do something else. So thank you guys so much, Chanel. Thank you, Anita. Thank you as well. Um, I hope everyone has a great week and you get some crafting done before the holidays get too crazy. So thank you. Um, one last question. Do you know how long in the initial free trial, the, the free trial will last for 30 days. So once you activate it, you have 30 days. So thanks guys. Thanks, Chanel. Have a great afternoon.